Well, hello, folks. Uh, once again, Eddie Lane here, and uh, and Luis Magano of Flyright Aviation. He's kind enough to let us use his Cessna 310, a very beautiful, well-maintained aircraft, for the purpose of teaching engine out demonstrations. We're going to uh, have engine failures on this on the runway during this flight. We're going to lose our engine in the air, also in the pattern after liftoff, and also we will do it at altitude. We'll go through the procedures of uh, doing the engine out procedures in those three different locations. Before taking off in a multi-engine airplane, one should always discuss the options on when the engine goes. There are three places to consider on the engine failure in a multi-engine airplane on takeoff. First one is on the runway. If it happens on the runway, well, in essence, your trip is canceled, so you just close both throttles, stay straight, brake only if you have to. Very important not to hit the brakes first. Remember, you have differential power. You hit one, th those brakes at the same time without closing the throttle, hit one brake just a little higher than the other, and you're off the runway. So just close the throttles, stay straight, break only if you have to, and notify ATC. After that, uh, we will do an engine failure in the air, and I'll cover that uh, shortly before we fail the engine. We'll go over a quick synopsis of that. Is everybody ready? We can seatbelts on? Ready. Okay. At this point, we'll call the tower for takeoff clearance. Yes. Uh, damage tower 6 Sierra Delta. I'll call your crosswind. The engine failure on the runway must be accomplished at less than 50% of VMC. VMC in this airplane is 85, so I must do it at 42 and a half, right? When you're training, you must, you must consider that the higher, the faster you go on this runway when you fail that engine, the more dangerous it is for your student to recover or the demonstration to complete. So I don't really push it all the way up there to that halfway mark, about a quarter of the way. 